Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to today's APO Productivity Talk. I'm Rie Minamoto from the APO Secretariat based in Tokyo, Japan. Today's topic is Industry 4.0 Behavioral Insights. Industry 4.0 doesn't replace existing processes, but changes and makes the ways we work more productive. The question is, how can we leverage technology to start and move forward with Industry 4.0? To discuss this interesting topic, we are pleased to have Mr. Kamarzaman bin Jahidin, founder and chairman of PowerNode Solution from Malaysia. Hello, Mr. Kamarzaman. Hi, Ray. Hi, great to see you. Yeah, thank you. you yeah. yeah, thank you very much for joining us today. Yeah, most welcome. Yeah, nice to see you. Now, I would like to introduce you to our viewers. Mr. Kamarzaman bin Jahidin is a founder and chairman of PowerNode Solution in Malaysia. In addition, He's adjunct professor at University Tan Abdul Razak in Malaysia, usually called Anitar. He also works as a consultant in the areas of Industry 4.0, digital transformation, smart manufacturing, and similar fields in partnership with other organizations, such as Malaysia Productivity Corporation, MPC. Earlier in his career, he had a lot of experience working in the private sector, such as Casio and Canon. Today, Mr. Kamarzaman will explain what behavioral insights are and why they are so important for us to understand in the context of Industry 4.0. He will also share the necessary mindset and approaches to maximize technology for productivity enhancement based on examples from his experience in consulting at factories. After his presentation, we will have interactive Q&A session. So if you have any questions for Mr. Kamar Zaman, please leave your questions in the YouTube live chat box. Please leave your name and country as well. We'll take as many questions as the time allows. OK. So, Mr. Kamar Zaman, please start your presentation if you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ray. Uh, hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, good evening. Good morning to all of you. Uh, thanks again to uh, APO for organizing this uh, P Talk, Productivity Talk, and also inviting me for the second time on sharing this. Uh, uh, productivity talks on industrial 4.0 behavioral insight. Uh, as what uh, Ms. Maria Manimoto has shared, uh, is about my profiles, then you can just call me uh, KJ uh, for a short form. Okay, uh, let's we start. Uh, basically, I would like to share some of my knowledge and experiences uh, uh, throughout my journey uh, since of the year 19. Uh, <laughs> 89s until today, together with uh, my partners and my, my colleagues uh, on uh, getting uh, the industries or the manufacturings or the companies into uh, further up on uh, improving their, their businesses. All right. So the sharings I will share today is actually to talk about the economy scenario, uh, what is behavioral insights as a general four terms, and what is uh, industry 4.0. Uh, what are the mindset needed and approach that uh, towards industry 4.0? and how can we go uh, forward into uh, Industry 4.0. So uh, depends on what uh, items that I shared or maybe some insight that I shared. So it's up to uh, the, the, the so-called this audience to, to take it very uh, seriously and uh, think of uh, creativity and wisdom to further uh, move forward on these issues. Okay, so what economy scenarios has started? Uh, business survival in the 21st century, uh, I think uh, my, 
my journey towards industry 4.0 when I started to learn details about what is industry 4.0 back in 2016 when I was in a, a journey to Europe. I understand how actually the the the, the technologies has started uh, in the year of 2011 uh, during the Hanover Fair when the Germans uh, talk about industry 4.0. All right, now we talk about uh, economic scenario. Every three to seven years, uh, we as an organization has to change, has to change or need to do something uh, because what has shown here shows that uh, companies from 50 years ago only 19% are still existing. All right, so. I think the impact uh, during COVID-19 has, has, has given us a very uh, great or big impact. So now we're talking about, not talking about the big, uh, big company, we're talking about how actually a small and fast fish are eating up a big and, and a slow fish. So you don't worry about what types of organizations that you are, uh, basically, whether it's a small, whether it's a micro, or whether it's a medium, or maybe it's a large. We need to transform. We need to do something towards our uh, organizations to move forward into the industries. Okay. So things that we talk about uh, how to move forward is things that we we talk about uh, what I can control, what the organization can control, what are the things that we can control. Uh, as you guys know that the industries, uh, the organization actually uh, been uh, influenced by this pastel. Pastel means for political, economics, uh, uh, social issues, uh, we talk about uh, technology, we talk about uh, environment, and we talk about legal issues. So things that we can control internally, please, we do need to control. So things that we are, things that we have been influenced, is difficult for us to control, then things that we are not out of control, forget about it, don't control it, because it's something else like political issues, uh, maybe legal issues, but of course, it will affect us somehow. I would like the words, uh, success at anything will always come down to this, focus and effort, and we can control both. So these are the words, uh, the words of uh, the motivations uh, quotes that I really uh, go into, uh, bring me into the, to the positions of, to understand well about industry 4.0. Okay, so you talk about what we can control. As you see in the slide that I, sh I shared, uh, things that we can control is the cost. We cannot control the price uh, that been sell outside. Maybe like our country here in Malaysia, there's a certain price that is been fixed by the government that we couldn't control at all. But what we can control is the cost. So if we can reduce the cost every month, every year, every day, then we may hide, we may have a, a bigger margin of profits. So if we couldn't control the cost, the costs are getting higher and higher and higher. So our profit margin become less, lesser and lesser and lesser. So it, this goes back to the lean, to the lean manufacturing or to the lean understanding. So how actually we can manage the wastages, how that we can control the wastages. For example, if you are in the manufacturing industries, you need to control the defects. When I was in the, a few a Japanese company like Keisho and Canon, they urged us uh, to reduce the defects. When the first model transferred from Japan, the, the defect was 30%, which is quite high. And then uh, it gives us some targets. So within two months, the, the defect has to be like below that than 10%. So we have to work on it, all right? So this defect, this one under waste, you talk about overproductions. Overproduction also might not be good to us because uh, we are not, uh, we are having extra places or extra storage if we have more products, uh, yet it's not been sold to, you know, cannot be sell to other, other customers. So we have to control on overproduction as well. Then you talk about waiting. So waiting means there are a lot of things waiting. Now, with, uh, previously, we were talking about waiting materials. We talk about waiting uh, machines to run because of uh, a few downtime. I will share some, some projects that I've done uh, to some of SME, uh, small, medium in that enterprise uh, company in Malaysia. So we have to wait sometimes a, a numbers of uh, minutes, a numbers of hours uh, to for the machines to run again because of uh, machine problems. So this is another waste. Then if, if you see, sometimes of, uh, some of the company might uh, use a non-utilized talents. What I mean non-utilized talents is that you may have a profile of each talents, right? So this is one, one thing that you will need to control. When you have a profile of each talents, then you can see what are the kins, what are the specializations of each talents. Then use it to the, pro to the proper places on this uh, uh, on these uh, utilized talents 
And then you talk about transportation. So uh, the best examples of waste in transportation is the is the uh, warehouse. The warehouse is so big, all right? So when the warehouse is so big, you can see uh, if you are, you are using a normal uh, delivery or so warehouse using forklift, using a lot of things, then you can see a lot of uh, a waste uh, in in transporting, which is about 60% of transportation in the warehouse is waste. So now some other countries, some other organizations which are big and, and also we have a very big volumes on transaction, they use, uh, they call it, they use robots. Right? They use robots to uh, really move uh, the products from time to time. And then another thing you got about inventory. So we we'll talk about inventory, uh, not only about inventory of the materials, but inventory of the spare parts of the machines. So if the spare part of the machines are not there when the machine's down, then you can see another issues of, of uh, wastages in waiting time is occur. So this is what happening in the manufacturing. And you talk about motions, uh, talk about motions, how actually uh, I was a process engineer before in some of the Japanese company. We study the motion studies. We see whether these persons are using both hands, whether they are, uh, they are delivery uh, the process from A to B, uh, C to D uh, in, in a longer way and, and the rest of it. Then the last one, you talk about E, which is extra processing. So extra processing, maybe you need to, add, to have an additional processes to control the quality because of the previous, uh, maybe on the first uh, process of the productions, uh, need some extra caution. So you need to add another, another station for this extra processing just to verify the quality of the product. So this might cost you a lot. So that's what I said. Things that we can control, we can we can control. One of them that we can control is this. This is D O W N T I M E, which is uh, wastages in the lean manufacturing. All right. So now we talk about the company need to transform. Uh, very interesting. All right. So we talk about company need trans to transform. I've been uh, doing a lot of projects with uh, Malaysia Productivity Corporation. Uh, we're having some some issues of. Uh, uh, foreign workers, we have issues, uh, manpower, we have issues on processes improvement and the rise of it. So what actually uh, digital transformation is actually is about reinventing the business. Some of us are afraid to move into digital transformation. So uh, this is what uh, I meant, but uh, when we, we go deeper into it, actually uh, digital transformation doesn't cost you a lot. It depends on what types of transformation that you really keen and what you really know. What we do actually to help the SME, especially on the small and medium and below, uh, we normally we do uh, understand the, the, the situation. What we do is that we diagnose the situation initially, then we recommended some of the processes or maybe some of the uh, technology in the industry 4.0 to be embarked into that system. So uh, that's what happened in most of the uh, organization or maybe SMEs in Malaysia. So when you talk about digital transformation, it's just about reinventing the business. As I mentioned earlier, a small fish and fast fish are eating up the big and slow fish. So we need to go faster on this situation of the current economy. So now we talk about behavioral insight. So in terms of behavioral insight as a layman, as a general, a generic uh, uh, so-called this uh, uh, terminology, it's about uh, an inductive approach towards a policy making which combine insight from the psychology, a cognitive science, and also social science, all right, to have or to discover how humans actually make choices, all right. This is how the terms of uh, terminologies of behavioral insight. And actually, uh, MPC has been given uh, by, uh, uh, by the governments to to uh, manage or to be a champions of the behavior insight towards all the agencies of, uh, uh, in Malaysia. So uh, if you go to MPC, I give you the, the links there. Uh, you can go to mpc.gov.my and then you go on the behavioral insight. You can see there's a, there's a, there's a place there. There's a, a, a screen there talking about behavioral insight. Then a lot of uh, product, I have a lot of activities that have been running until today. So behavioral insight, what you say here is human nature is not a problem that can be fixed by rules and regulations. All solution to the, to the existing problems must be, be, must be based on how people behave, not on how actually they should behave. So this is what behavioral insight is all about. All right. So now actually I, I have uh, do a lot of uh, research and study by myself. Then I will say these things. 
behavior inside industry 4.0 an effort that gain accurate and evident based understandings of how people behave and make decisions all right so i will share you some of the situation when i use some of the products of uh, uh, industry some of the technology industry 4.0 to see how people behave and make decision out of that. So with this, actually, you can see with the helps of the technologies, what you can see is the hint hindsight of the situation, the insight of the situation, and the foresight of the situation. What are there? What are the terms of hindsight, insight, and foresight? I will explain when it goes into uh, deeper. When I see, you, I give you some examples, and then the approach of behavioral insight towards industry 4.0 is an evidence. It's a practical issues. You need to have some innovation. You need to have some uh, some examples of the practical issues and also some evaluation after we have done that innovation or maybe some practical issues that we have done. So I would like to share some words here from uh, Dr. Danila Mokta. Uh, is from uh, University Kebangsaan Malaysia, one of the top uh, universities in Malaysia. She talks about right R I D E R mean research. You need to have the you need to have a research. To define what is the problems, then I you need to innovate the innovate do something things of uh, some some uh, some some innovation items or some some innovation ideas, and you talk about D de developing, then after that you start developing and data collections, all right, and then you you would you can see the words data collection, and then E you talk about evaluate, then when have you when you have a data, what you can do is actually. We need to have to understand well about what actually happened. Uh, so, when you talk about data, we need to analyze the data. All right. So this is what behavioral insight in the terminologies of both uh, in the industry 4.0 and the general items. So now we talk about industry 4.0. I will not go details of industry 4.0. I think uh, everybody understand what is industry 4.0. One, two, and three, and four. So I need to focus more on the four. All right. I think uh, uh, in Japan now they have started so society 5.0, uh, which is uh, more towards uh, aging society. Uh, this is very very nice. I also learn on that. All right. We talk about cyber. We talk about industry 4.0. We talk about cyber physical system. I will explain you what is cyber physical system. We talk about technologies of cloud computing. We talk about technologies of IoT in Japan society 4.0. We talk about AIoT, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, and the rest of it. So you can see the comparison between 3.0 and 4.0. 3.0, you talk about process centric, and 4.0, you talk about human centric. We have the power to control what happening. Likewise, in the previous 3.0, is we just give the machines to run without knowing anything. So I can use some example out of this when uh, when I go when we go on the uh, details of the technologies uh, approach. All right. So when you see here, basically, uh, one, two, and three, you talk about doing things right. When you go on the fourth industrial revolution. You talk about doing the right things the correct way. Uh, so these are two different things. Eh? One, two, and three, and then fourth, doing the right things in in the correct way. So another things that can be impact uh, impactful to the communities or to the society. You talk about adding quality into quantity. Like like previously, we more talk about quantity, quantity. But with the helps of technology of industry, proposal, we are adding quality into quantity, and you talk about make a better in decision making so we talk about industry 4.0 in terms of industry 4.0 i will just summarize it as a digitalization of data or info exchange whatever data that you have through an advanced technology i will share you after this what are the advanced technology where everything are real time connected and they are where everything are real clear real time connected and collaborated through cyber physical system so this what the terminologies or the words of industry 4.0 Remember, when you talk about insight, you talk about how we make decisions, how people behave. In Industry 4.0 also, with the help of Industry 4.0, we also can do better in decision making. All right? So, what is cyber physical system? A cyber physical system is talk about communication. You talk about control. You talk about computations. So, now everybody talk about communications. Today, we do we do have a very strong communication today, which our my broadband in Malaysia and and the other side, I mean, Japan are really having a good broadband. And so other countries, uh, whoever watch this uh, uh, P-talk or productivity talk, must have a good connectivity. So connectivity is very, very important. Talk about communication. Now people talk about 4G, talk about 5G. Some other countries, they go like 6G. 
So it depends on what situations are you. If you were in the manufacturing, which is closed area, maybe you can just use Wi-Fi. That is called short range. But if you are doing on the bigger scales, if maybe you are doing uh, in the in the agriculture, in the farm, in the palm oil and rice of it, maybe you can use a long range uh, communication uh, embedded systems. Then you talk about control. What is control? Control is about how you want to control. So IoT is part of the part of the uh, uh, items or devices that we can manage to control. So IoT is embedded with all the sensors. So all the sensors will collect all the data. All right, you can see the middle here is data. All right, so we collect all the data and then put into the middleware and put into the pub uh, in the cloud computing, and what we do after that. So the best part is don't 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 make your data sleeping. So use the data. All right. So if you make your data sleeping, they become a dark data. There's none giving you any impact of the data if you collect it. So from there onward, you can see the data that been collected are raw data. So we need to have a computation. This is the next level. We've got a computation. So what we need to have is a computation of how to make the data become visual. So when you see the data become more visual and we can see all the three items that I mentioned earlier in the slide, which is hindsight, which is insight, and which is foresight. So this is what we've been talking, uh, we will be talking uh, throughout the next of my journey on this slide. Okay, so industry 4.0 through correlated uh, through, through advanced technologies, these are these are the advanced technology that we mentioned. So you can see here there's a lot, all right? But remember, these are not static technology, they are dynamics from time to time. So as Malaysia, we started with industry uh, forward, we use 11 uh, pillars of technologies. So one of them is artificial intelligence, advanced materials, uh, IoT, Internet of Things, uh, cloud computing, and the rest of it. Uh, even though we use now uh, a big data analytics, we use uh, additive manufacturing. Uh, now people are talking about auto autonomous robot and the rest of it. So these are actually the technology pillars that we use. So we look at this. You like like if you are not in the technologies, uh, you are a layman person. You are not in technologies. You feel like, oh, I'm very afraid of these things or maybe these jargons. You afraid of it. But if you go deeper on it, it's not that. Uh, uh, that's that that uh, so horror actually uh, is just uh, terms. The, but we go deeper on it, then can give you impact out of it. So another one approach that that I would like to share with about about industry 4.0 is the mindset. IR 4.0 is not replacing our existing processes. What it does is actually changes the way we do them. As I mentioned earlier during the first slide, it's about doing the right things the correct way. Right? So this is what we say. We need to have a good mindset. It's not about replacing our existing process. It's not about uh, the robot is taking our process. No, it's about changes the way we do them. That's number one. So we talk about mindset. You need to have a growth mindset. So what is a growth mindset is all about is actually um, when you're dealing with these te digital technologies, you will be facing a lot of problems. The first trial that you will be facing is that you'll be failed. That's number one. That's definitely nobody's in, in this world are perfect. All right. So it's perfect. But uh, what you what I mean by, by gross mindset is one thing is that be patient for the challenge. All right. And then uh, be strong on it. All right. So don't, don't worry about the failure. The more the failure it is, the more you get to know what actually uh, you are doing. That's what you can see Bill Gates, uh, the rest of it uh, from Windows 3.1 are now it's become Windows 12 or Windows 13. So it goes from time to time. It depends on the technologies that we have. So the things that we need to have a growth mindset and also the positive uh, mindset. So what I, sh I want to tell uh, everybody here is about, about this behavior, uh, these technologies that we need to go uh, don't wait, uh, don't don't afraid of the failure for the first time, but uh, move forward. I'll share you my experience when uh, our first uh, attempt uh, to these uh, issues fail, but then we go further from time to time, but still need to be improved. I'll share you on that later on. All right. So another mindset is that we talk about organizations, we talk about processes, then we talk about technology. Don't put technology in front when you go industry 4.0. You know all the jargons of technologies, right? But do not put the technologies in front. So the technology doesn't fit to your processes if the processes doesn't fit to the technologies. What I mean first is actually the organization, the people inside the organization has to have a growth mindset. Don't worry. Some some of the uh, uh, faces that we are we are some of the issues that we are facing is that 
uh, people are worried that uh, when Industry 4.0 take over the processes, uh, people say that, oh, I have no jobs. No, that's totally wrong. Number one is that we have to go, we have to go on organization. We need to have some consensus from the top management down to the lower management. That's number one. Number two, we talk about processes. Identify your processes. Which processes that need to be uh, improved? For example, like uh, you have a lot of processes, right? But maybe a top three of the process, your pain point in your processes need to be improved. Then from there, gather again, choose the technologies, which, which of the technologies that available in the industry proposal that can be used to improve your productivity or to improve your quality or to improve your efficiency. As I mentioned earlier, do not put technology in front. Put technology at the back, then choose the technology that fit to your processes. All right? And then you talk about people. You talk about uh, simple A, B, C. To, to have a good mindset people, you need to understand their attitude. You need to understand their behavior. Then you need to understand their culture. All right? So please identify the key players of your organization that can carry out these programs of Industry 4.0. And then, of course, we need a management support. And then you talk about uh, skills and experience. So uh, a few countries uh, like Malaysia also, they, they had a lot of uh, programs like uh, NPC. They are running like My Reskill IoT to give a free uh, education and, and, and also these uh, IoT devices to uh, selected companies in Malaysia. So this is number one that you have to think. So think about attitude, behavior that, that and culture. Please do understand that people inside the company need to understand better. So bring your levels of uh, uh, culture in your organization to be a knowledgeable uh, community in your organization to understand well it's about Industry 4.0. Otherwise, you are talking to a different language. One, you are talking to a different frequency. Then you cannot jive together to bring up the productivity based on the Industry 4.0. Then number two is talk about operations. So you must understand your supply chains or maybe you must understand your, uh, I would say, your uh, value stream mappings. So the way that, that we figure out this, you can see the details of information flow and the material flow. Then from here, you can see, you can, you can pinpoint what are the pain points, what are the problems on each of the processes that we are facing. So with this one, then later on, you're collecting the data. All right. Either you are collecting data manually or you're collecting data by the uh, industry for zero by using the IoT. You can have, number one, you can have descriptive analytics. You know what happened. Number two, you talk about diagnostic analytics. Why did it happen? And number three, you talk about predictive analytics. What will happen if I don't do anything? Right. And then the last part, you talk about prescriptive analytics. We need to do something before it repeating again the problems. So this is what happening in the approach of operations. Then you talk about operation as well. This is some some ideas or maybe some some uh, some initial innovation through your uh, organization. You need to have a control center in the middle. So all the all the informations are parked into the control center. Then all informations are flows through the control center. This is what you call digitalizations. So we have the you have the data that you share among your organization. So what you can do with these informations that number one you can think of predictable. Pre, predictability, you talk about sustainability, you talk about traceability of the processes and also the product. In, in fact, the human, you talk about the speed, the velocity, and you talk about how your operation become agile towards the economic change, towards the economic scenario. So by having this, the control center in the middle, what you can do, you can manage, you can monitor, you can even make decision out of that. With this, uh, uh, with this style of operation using the industry 4.0 technology, in the middle, you have a control center, can have efficient, responsive, and cost-effective. So with this data, with this uh, uh, huge data of operation, would bring you another level. As you, If you are as a leader, you can bring us from a power-driven management to a value-driven management. What I mean by power-driven management is that you use a power, you use your, your emotion, and you use your, your hardships of, of, of instructing your teams. But by having this data, you can bring down your 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 fears on management you can bring down your levels of power driven to a value driven give value from from uh, from instructing your employees to empowering your employees that is how actually uh, it helps on on these issues now you talk about technologies there are a lot of technologies that i mentioned here but i need to share you uh, only one one technologies that i would like to share you 
uh, which is uh, IoT. So uh, this is the IoT devices that uh, that I actually and uh, my partner called uh, TS uh, Arifin uh, invented uh, these IoT devices. You can see this is the IoT devices. It has a lot of sensors here, and this is the power uh, USB-C power. And then the, this is the name at the back. You can see by name of Hibiscus, the company name, and there, there's my name there. So why we invented this one? Because when I was uh, during COVID-19, 2020, uh, uh, we have a lot of issues. Uh, we couldn't go outside and the rest of it. So I think that uh, after going through Industry 4.0, I said, how can we simplify to help the SMBs to understand well about Industry 4.0? especially the IoT. So we invented this. Everything is embedded into this. You can see a lot of sensors there. So you just plug in and do, do a bit of programming, uh, a simple programming, and it's open source programming. You don't have to pay a single cent for the programming. You need to understand the programming as well. And then that's it. You can capture the data. All right. So with this, actually, we help a lot of SMBs actually uh, in the manufacturing. So I'll share you some of the uh, projects that we do on, on this technology. All right. So this is one of it. So this company is having a lot of problems, uh, the machine down. So they are running two shifts, all right? When they're running two shifts, uh, the second shift, actually at night shift, a uh, machine always down, that cost them a lot. Uh, as compared to the previous uh, morning shift, uh, they are running very, very good, about 192,000 a day, uh, a shift. But when they go second shift, they see their output is less than 100,000. So the reason why, because uh, we have no idea whether uh, the machine uh, always sleep at night or the technicians that manage uh, control the machines are sleeping. So there are two things that we need to know. So what actually happened is that we put a sensor device here. At here, we put a sensor device here. So when the machines are, are putting in down, so we capture the, the motions. Next one. They have this comp These uh, machines are a molding machine company. They are 25 cavities. So from there, we capture here. All right. But the issue is not there. The issue is about the machine downtime. So what we do help this company is that we choose, we have programmed the IoT, the devices, with the middleware programming. So we do program that if the machines are not running more than five time, five minutes, we will trigger some information to the supervisors or to the group in the telegram. So with this, uh, the the what what uh, feedback from from the from the manufacturing is said it helps a lot so it reduced from uh, from uh, a huge uh, breakdown downtime to become lesser so this system actually will helps uh, it's just like undone system undone is like a red green and uh, red green and yellow but instead of red green and yellow it's talk about sending the message to you it's about human centric so you know what's happening then you can control so even, even after the machines are not repaired after five minutes, the system will trigger again to the information until the machine start running. Then only the thing stop. So from there, with the IoT, what we do actually, we just do two processes or two levels of IoT, which only do monitoring and also we do controlling. We don't touch of optimization yet, optimize the machine capacity, not yet. We just collecting the data. And second, then the last part is about autonomous. Let the machine run by itself. So that, that's how we use technology. That's one processor. A second process is that, that the second, of, second innovation that we do is to help this company. They are doing a carbonated uh, uh, drinks. All right. So uh, they have no idea what is the temperature that that supposed to be when the cold water mixed together with the gas, then put inside these bottles here. So after we do some sensors, we put a, we put a sensor here, a temperature sensor, so when the water goes here, then we put a sensor here, then we finally we found that actually the, the, the water sensors has to be there together with the gas. It's not 3 degrees Celsius. It's about 10 to 12 degrees Celsius. So from there, the numbers now become higher and higher, and then the quality of the product become better. All right. So this one of the approach that we helps uh, the SMB. It's a very small SMB. As I mentioned, don't have to worry about the jargons of the technologies. Again, it depends on what process that you are facing. So what are the problems you are facing? We will help them on that. So this one thing. And then you talk about another approach on the retailing. We talk about uh, uh, these uh, uh, laundries, uh, the, the, uh, uh, self-laundry. So this self-laundry is actually is good because all, all these laundries machines are embedded on this uh, together with the IoT. 
So the best part is that we know what actually these machines having, the behavior of the machine, the functionality of the machine, whether the machines are still running, whether the machines are not running, and the rest of it. We know real time. And then the best part, we know what is the sales, which machines are contributing more sales, all right? And then we know what are the trend of the sales happening. For example, like people normally in Malaysia, they wash, uh, they go to the laundry machine at uh, weekend, Friday, Wednesday, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But in the middle of uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, there's none. So the sales in these three days are not so good. So what the this uh, owner of this uh, laundry says that, oh, I need to have a consistent sale. So these three days, which is Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, give some, some discount, uh, whoever comes to this laundry uh, area. So this is how actually we are doing more. You, you know, when you use IoT, you can see the insight, the behavioral insight, the, the, the customer uh, behavior of what happening in that uh, uh, category. So we cannot change, but we need to understand what is the behavior. So from there, uh, we can see the insight of the IoT will help more on the businesses. I'll give you another example or this one, for example. All right. This is a very interesting subject for me. Um, uh, initiative for me. It has eight machines. All right. When they have eight machines, but they want to test one machine. So we do a test one machine. So what happens is that, as I mentioned earlier, uh, be brave. Don't wait. Don't afraid of the failure of the, of the technology. Initially, we, when we run this one, we have a failure. We couldn't, we couldn't capture the data because of the, of the uh, boxes, the products are running very fast. We couldn't capture. We use only proximity. But only then, after a few weeks, we study that we need to change the sensor. So from there, actually, we do help them to capture the data here by using IoT and then put it inside the cloud. And then from this data, we'll park into uh, a table of data, which is computation. Uh, we see the visual, visual analytics of the data. All right. So now there's no more about about doing manually on the reporting data, it can be sent directly to the to this uh, 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 top management or even though to these uh, uh, production managers. All right, then I will share you some uh, higher levels of uh, technologies approach is MES, uh, manufacturing executive system. So this is on a higher level, and this is called this will cost you a lot. But as I mentioned, don't worry about how how big is your company. You can only start. So for this one, I would suggest. For the big company who's having maybe uh, more than 20 machines, this is good. You can always monitor what are the machine behavior, whether these are the machines are running or not running, that even know in details what are the output of the machine. Then this these technologies or this uh, system can talk together with the ERP and it can show from the material input down to the material output, even though you can you can trace up to the levels of uh, what are the calculations of, of uh, one product to be produced uh, by. The, by the machines or by the total manufacturing. So this is on the higher level. All right. So talk about behavior inside industry 4.0. So we have you have been collecting the data. So once the data you have been collected, all right, what you need to know is about you have a lot of data. But if you don't if you don't use the data, we are surrounded by data, but stuff for the inside. So meaning that we need to find what actually the data can help us to further up or to innovate our 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 organizations to innovate our manufacturing. We need to compute the data to become analytics. Data will talk to you if you are willing to listen. All right. So what we are willing to listen is to compute this data to become a dashboard. As I mentioned here, a dashboard. So from the dashboard, you can see the descriptive analytics. You can see a diagnostic analytics. You, talk, you can talk about predictive analytics. You can also think about prescriptive analytics, What, how to improve. And from this data, actually, the data will bring you to another level. You talk about cognitive analytics, which can bring you to a level of artificial intelligence. And finally, they bring you to autonomous system. As I mentioned earlier uh, in the slide, uh, IoT has a four levels of maturity. You talk about uh, monitoring. You talk about controlling the situation. You talk about optimizing the solutions, uh, the, the situations. And finally, you, be, you talk about optimizations of the situations. So from here, you can see, you can see when you're collecting the data, you talk about hindsight, information that you're collecting. Second thing, if you go deeper on it, the data that you're collecting is become knowledge to you. Then you do analytics. And then after further up, you talk about optimizations. You need to have a dashboard to visualize a dashboard and become analytics. So the way to bring about change is to be proactive and, and to be active. All right. So with this data, 
we can do a lot of things. For example, like the machine just now, we can bring them to be a more proactive way of doing things. All right. So, of course, there's are challenges on doing industry 4.0. There's a lot of challenges as I face in this, as I face personally and also others are facing only. So I will divide it into two levels, uh, into two portions. Number one is talk about walls of governance, about funding. It's about strategy. If your company don't have funding, don't have strategies, it's difficult to move into industry 4.0. So more or less, you need to have a small funding, not even a big funding, but small funding. All right. You talk about wall infrastructures. Of course, when you talk about CPS, cyber physical system, you talk about communication, you talk about infrastructures, you talk about the, the connectivities. Uh, so if like like measure uh, we have a lot of remote area so you if you go on the remote area you couldn't find that that transmission but now the the country has moved into uh, towards the better communication uh, uh, system on it and now you talk about wall of legal system we talk about regulations especially drone for example right so you need to have a good frequency uh, you cannot fly a certain levels of uh, height and the rest of it so you need to have a regulation in fact walls of regulation also among the organization also you need to come up with a regulation what data can be shared, what data cannot be shared, and the rest of it. Then we talk about another levels of challenges. You talk about wall of human capitals, skills and talents. Uh, I always come to these levels of skill and talent. Oh, I want to move. I want to move into industry 4.0, but, but what the, the people say, the organization says, oh, I don't, my workforce are not ready. That's number one. So I want to do more on industry 4.0, but one thing, I don't have enough fund. So these all the 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 problems that they are facing, all right? So wall of, another things are wall of technologies, talk about usage of technology. As I mentioned earlier just now, you talk about product organization, you talk about processes, you talk about technology. Do not put technology in front from organization and processes. If you put technology in front, you become slave to technology, all right? So if you put technology at the back, then technology becomes slave to you. So you have to understand this situation. And the last part, you talk about wall of social acceptance get your society to understand get your team to understand what industry points will give us impact on the organization so when everybody know understand do, do understand what is happening then finally we go up to the knowledge uh, so knowledgeable society this will bring up to your higher level so a way forward from my last word on the way forward number one to have a good mindset growth mindset eliminate the fixed mindset number two culture you need a change management culture you talk about uh, goals, you need to define clear the goals. What are you moving up to? You talk about talent, always upskill and reskill your talent, learn, relearn and unlearn. You talk about technology, choose the right technology. Do not choose the, mis the wrong technology. It will, it will give you more problems later on. Then you talk about attitude, about never give up on this industry 4.0. So with that, I would like to, sh to share my last slide to talk about on on your focus mode all right on your motivation mode uh, on your dedication mode and off your excuses to an industry for personal for a better uh, uh reinventing the business on digital transformation that's the insight of industry for personal so back to you Ray. i hope i won't eat the time yes thank you very much for the great presentation mr kamarzaman now we understand why behavioral insights are so important for your decision making in industry 4.0 and to manage technology, we will need growth mindset and also good approaches. Yeah, thank you very much for your sharing with a very interesting examples. Yep. So now we would like to move on to the Q&A session. Again, let me encourage viewers to leave your questions for Mr. Kamarzaman with your name and the country in the YouTube live chat, check, chat section. We welcome your active participation. Okay. So, Mr. Kamarzaman, before taking questions from viewers, I would like to ask you some. Is it okay? Yeah, please do. Yeah. Waiting Thank for you. the answer. <laughs> yeah. So, the first one is about the data collection so, and analysis. So, in your presentation, you showed us the device called Hibiscus, yeah, that you your team developed. Yeah, yeah okay. that's really, yeah, I was very surprised. It's very, you know, small, but it has a lot of functions. Yeah. yeah. So could you demonstrate how data are collected and analyzed and how we can, you know, develop the database on the, you know, laptop or computer if possible? All right, yeah. 
Oh, I, I did share some video. Can you play the video for a while? Ah, yes. Yeah, please wait a while. All right. You see the, the video? This is an old machine, very old machine. All right. I think the machines uh, maybe uh, 10 years, 15 years back. It only has a, the first video that you see is the is the uh, is the reader uh, analog reader uh, digit, uh, analog reader shows that how many output that shows. So issues for the production is that every time they want to know the the, the output of the product, it has to go down to the machine and 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 record it manually. All right. So these are the issues. So what happened is that this uh, company has approached uh, MPC basically, and MPC approached me to help this company. And then we do find that, oh, okay, we, we understand the situation. First, with that, we do diagnostic, and then we know this, the problems, and then you say, okay, we can do that. So what we do is that we, we use these IoT devices. If you look at the video, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a printings of uh, boxes, then you can see underneath, I put an arrow, white arrow there. Actually, that is where we put these IoT devices, all right? So the IoT devices hook up with the with this, uh, what we call that, this uh, light sensor to capture the data, all right? So, uh, can I share my slide here? Uh, yes, my, please. My okay, thank you, all right. So, uh, these are the, the real-time data, if you can see, uh, uh, you can see now is uh, Malaysia is around uh, 146. Uh, the data capture is 224, all right? So, the IoT that being stored at that machine are capturing the actual data. It's a real-time data, all right? So from this data, you can see that we do some, uh, I did some programming a bit, uh, and then uh, I did to understand the situation. And then from this data, if you were to understand the, the, the inside of these machines by using this data, you, can, you cannot do. Uh, I think maybe, Re, can, can you read this, right? Yes, we can see. Right. You can read this, but we, this is this is what this is date, this is date. time, date, yes. this date, this is time, and this is quantity. All right. Mm, so quantity so, of the products. Yeah, quantity of the products that run through the sensor. Mm, wow. So if, so if you were to see like this kind of data, what can you do for a better decision making? You cannot do anything, right? It's just the numbers. All right. Yes. So what what we what we did, what we do basically, we have convert this data to become an analytics like this. Okay, I I try to make it bigger so that people can see. Right? Yeah, thank you. So, so from here, if I if I do a refresh of this data, you can see now it's ninety eight thousand the one one zero zero one. I just refresh this data. And then the numbers will change to 98,611. The data from this has been stored to become an analytic like this. So this is one way of how you read the data to make a better decision. For example, like this is this is by monthly, by month. On every month, the data has been collected and then to, to be tabulated, uh, to be visual, to be like this. So you see in August, I, can, I, I would like to share you some examples in August, all right? So in August is the highest quantity ever made by this company, which is 354,487. So now we move into August. You can see on the top here is an August, right? So I click this August. Then you can see another, an, a, another data has been captured into the August. All right. So I just reset this data first. Now you can see, I hope you can see, right? Oh, okay. Now become bigger. All right, you can see this tabulated data is being captured based on the three conditions that, that this one, which is the date, the times, and the output. All right? So you can see from here, from here, you can see the hindsight of the data. What, what happening to the machine? Oh, this particular month, there's one day, the machine make about 87,000, which is the highest quantity ever among the rest of the day in, in August. So then you see, oh, it's on the 2nd of, 2nd of August, 2022. Then we can just scroll down. We can just do details on what actually happened in the 2nd of August. All right? 
So you can see what happened in second of August. There is no room for the machine to stop. The machines are running very well. All right. So this is one condition. So now we 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 do reset again. You see what are the lowest output of the month? Uh, I would say like maybe on the on on this day, which is on the sixth of August, which is four thousand seven hundred eighty-seven. So what we do is that we can just uh, click six of August. Then you can see the pattern of the condition in the running project is very. Uh, there's a, there's a lot of gap in between the the time. So it shows that there are a lot of machine running or the machine downtime, or maybe there's a lot of model change. So these are the, the insights of the situation uh, uh, towards that machine. So back again, uh, Ray, back again to this, uh, to this situation. All right, I give you the total uh, output. So from this one, you can see, you can also forecast that can I, can this company make 3,584 uh, to be as what uh, in August based on this condition. Uh, so that's what we call the foresight of the situation. So hindsight, you have no. The insights, you have none. You have no already. And then you have new already. And then the foresight, you can predict, oh, I can, we can do 3,000, uh, 300,000, 354,487, maybe more than that. So this is what I would like to share with you and the rest of it. Yeah, that's really great. Thank you very much for sharing it. So now we can understand what's going on in the, you know, at the site and also in the information so that we can yeah. see the mechanism of the data collection and analysis and also making decision and taking action. Thank you very much. Yeah, I yeah. would like to share so, one more. Uh, yes, can you share? Please, uh, yeah. Just so you won't forget, uh, this, is, this, is on, this is on the small level. But on the bigger level, which is M uh, on the bigger level, which is MES, which is a manufacturing executive system, you can even see the the shop floor uh, here. I'll I'll share with you the shop floor. You can see which machines are running, which machines are idling, which machines are not running. So they are all IoT devices and uh, uh, put into these machines. This is the production floor, which has a huge machine. We have some plenty of machines we can monitor from far. So you can even you can even have a dashboard on on each of the situation here what are the conditions of the output what are the condition of the situation you can even have the machine performance the production the downtime even though the die change also is being recorded and then uh, the best part of it you can see <laughs> you can see the, the status of each machine whether the spoilers are, are handling this and the rest of it so this is on the bigger scales which is cost might cost some of uh, a company a huge amount but it's talk not talk about amount they talk about the impact the business impact and analysis analysis of of what when you when you actually innovate your businesses to industry 4.0 all right back to you ray thank you very much so in related to that point uh, i would like to ask you about the maintenance and also upgrading of the device so after the iot system or those devices are installed do companies need to perform maintenance or upgrading frequently? In yeah. that case, can they can they do it by themselves, or they need external expertise or technicians for that? All right. Uh, for this case, uh, the one that I show you on uh, on this case, right? So uh, we have designed the the situation so that to be a less maintenance. Uh, as you know, there's a sensor. We call it light sensor to to capture the data. Uh, what what might be cost them uh, on the maintenance is just to clean uh, the sensors because of gummy uh, uh, dust, all right? Uh, then then you can have a better readings of the data. That's number one. Number two is to make sure that of course uh, when you talk about IoT, everything has been connected using electricity, all right? That's number two. Then number three is talk about connectivity to make sure that the connectivities are good enough to capture the data, all right? So. Uh, I would say like very, very less maintenance, uh, even though the, the, the gummy or the, the uh, dust that you need to clean is not every day, maybe three, three, day, three months at one time, so maybe less than that, or maybe more than that. So it's, it's a very less, uh, uh, very less maintenance. And even though that if there is any, some, uh, there is any connectivity issues, uh, we can remotely uh, manage from, from anywhere that, uh, that can be accessed to that system. I see. So it is very practical and simple 
to oh, yeah. you know, feel it. Yeah, yeah, I see. Thank you very much. Okay, so we have received some questions from viewers. So oh. can I take some questions for you? Yeah, please, please do. Please do. Yeah. So the first three, uh, Miss Ida from Malaysia. Right. Oh. So based on your experience, digitalization efforts in the company, do they come from top down or bottom up usually? Which is the more, you know. <laughs> All right. Happening. Okay. Yep. Um, uh, this, this, these things that I experience, eh? uh, yeah, when, when we move into Industry 4.0, uh, I face myself uh, issues where uh, top management uh, don't really concern uh, the impact of industry 4.0 because on that time people are busy about about talking about I want to bring the business higher and higher and the rest of it. So when the COVID nineteen came into the pictures, uh, now the total total organization, actually the top management, think about everybody talk about uh, di digitalization or digital transformation. So if you were to ask me. Uh, in an organization or a small or a big organization, it has to be from the top. All right. It has to be from the top to understand what actually they want to be. Because if you go from the bottom, if you want to invest something or you want to do innovate, innovation, of course, it will, it will, it will eat up your, your fund or maybe you need, you need a fund to, to actually implement that, that things. So where you can get a fund. All right. So the only way to get a fund is from the top management. So the first thing is to understand, uh, to get the top management, not, to, not to understand, but to get the top management involved or at least aware of the situation. So that will be my, my, my answer to Ida. Thanks, Ida, for the questions. Mm. Thank you very much for your response. So the other question uh, is a kind of a specific one from Mr. Sugu Jaika. Professor, your innovative device can it be used for CNC milling machines to detect machine machine downtime as your case study? Oh, thank you, Sugu. Sugu yep. from from where? From? Uh, I cannot... From Malaysia. Uh, oh, yes. From Malaysia. Ah, yeah, from Malaysia. Yeah. Too. Yeah. All right, Sugu. To be to be exact with you, uh, the IoT is is for every everything. It's for every devices. For example, that you mentioned to detect downtime. Downtimes mean that the machines are not running, correct? So that's what I, that's what we, uh, we shared, uh, I shared with you about uh, the molding machines, all right? So when the machines are not functioning, we capture the downtime. So if the downtime is more than five minutes, we trigger out to the teams in the telegram and then push information to them so that they can repair, all right? That's that's what we can do. So it's be it's been running uh, well at the moment now. Uh, so don't worry about that. This is not the only IoT that I share with you. Uh, there's a lot of IoT devices available in the market. One of them is uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh, we call it this uh, Arduino. Then you talk about Adafruit. Talk about Cucumber from Thailand. Adafruit from from US. And now we have Hibiscus from Malaysia. So it, it won't cost you that much. It costs you only 100, 155 ringgit uh, for the devices. But the sensors is different. All right, this is for the main board. And you can see this is the it uh, is a dual core processor, right? So thanks to Google, it can be done. No problem. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much for your explanation. So, uh, as next, I would like to ask about questions related to human resources. So, uh, the first one is reskilling of employees. For example, yeah. if there are no employees who are familiar with digital technology in the company or organization, how long will it take for them to gain enough skills and knowledge to manage those devices? <laughs> right. Interesting, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, because we right. receive this kind of question very frequently from companies, especially okay. SME. Yep. All right. So that, that's what when uh, when we move into digital technology or industry 4.0, we need a partner. We need a collaboration within uh, the industries and also the experts from the outside. Which experts mean? I say uh, the uh, technologies that invent these kind of things. So uh, you what what the SMEs need to know is how to operate this IoT, nothing much than that. So maintenance-wise, let it be by the technologies. Of course, the technologies of the company need to support, okay? So in terms of upskilling and reskilling, uh, I would like to share you something, uh, Re and the rest of it. Uh, under MPC, uh, Malaysian Productivity Corporations, they have two years, they have run this program called My Reskill IoT. It's just to get SMEs to aware 
that this IoT can give you miracles, right? So not only this one, but they use others. So we have, we have, we have. Uh, I think MBC have done about five thousand com small companies, not small, but big company also, to be embarked to share uh, the knowledge of IoT to SMEs. So this will help the SMEs to understand well what is actually IoT is all about. So don't worry about the employees' uh, familiarity or whatever. So as I mentioned earlier, my my experience in the in the in the carbonated drinks company. So none of the peoples are technologists. Even the words IoT, they are not they are not aware of it, but they are using it. So that's one example that I can share you. So so from far we can control, uh, and then don't worry about uh, as long as the things are being connected well. All right, maintaining a bit more. All right, and that's it. You can run. Yeah? Don't worry about that. Yeah, that's encouraging. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Then the next question related to HR is human resources is about the mindset of people. So you mentioned in your presentation about the you know fixed mindset and growth mindset. So can you give us some tips, you know, how we can change from fixed to growth mindset of people? <laughs> All right. Uh, interesting question, uh, Rhi. Uh, at the same time also, uh, Malaysia is facing a lot of issues, uh, especially SME, uh, to reduce costs. And also to see uh, what can we do to improve the processes. So, first of all, uh, what I will uh, what I want to know, uh, what I will share on the from the from the fixed mindset to the growth mindset is uh, number one is let them feel what is the pain point that they are facing. All right. So just declare what are the pain point. Maybe don't declare all, but maybe but declare three. So from the three declarations of the pain point, so from there actually uh, we work on it. So from we, when we work on it, then the ideas of of putting some solutions or innovation solutions to that problem, for example, like oh you need this system, oh you need that system, can be done. So this how this how because you as a leader, uh, you you cannot you cannot uh, actually uh, sit on the pain point. You need to extract the pain point. You need to get out of the pain point. So from from there, actually, when we declare the pain point, so then they find a solutions with the helps of other collaborative uh, partners that it will give you that when when there is a success story out of that then they move up i've been facing this a lot uh, normally what i did was i find a pain point let them show me the pain point and then i give the solution immediate the solution and then they say oh success then they move forward so now they are as i mentioned you now the, the the boxes the company boxes now they are thinking on the smart manufacturing and they will put all the iot for the rest of the eight machines so that's yeah. how the mindset has changed uh, from the top yeah, management. That's, yeah, that's convincing. Yeah, because it's based on your experience. Yeah, thank you very yeah. much. Think, yeah, think, then, big, uh, think big, but do small things first, right? Yeah. Right. You can right. think big, but do small things first, then slowly you can move mm -hmm. from time to time. Right? Yeah, start from small. Yeah, yeah. thank you very much. Uh, so the, our last question is about the, you know, it's a, uh, little bit of different perspective uh, that is roles of government so in the presentation uh, you mentioned about some or several challenges in terms of the industry 4.0 you know maximizing technology etc such as walls of governance infrastructure and legal system so what do you think what can governments do to address those challenges what is the roles of government all right uh, this, this, uh, as you know, uh, another two days uh, will be an election day for Malaysia. <laughs> okay, is a <laughs> governance, right? Okay, uh, the governments of Malaysia now, actually Malaysia, I don't know other countries, but uh, we are towards industry four point zero. We have a lot of policies, industry forward policies, industry four IR policies. Even we have Malaysian digital economy policies. So these are all towards industry four point zero. So. What the government has really looked deep into these situations is that we have to move forward. We have to move into a level up as compared to uh, assembly manufacturing now become a high tech manufacturing. For example, like on, in terms of manufacturing, so we talk about uh, infrastructures, right? You talk about infrastructures. Now uh, the government has moved into five G. Slowly moved to five G. That was under the name called Jendela. Jendela means an initiative towards five G. You need to good a better connection. And then you talk about legal system, for example, like uh, drones, for example, as mentioned earlier, 
when you talk about drones, they need certain uh, uh, frequency or maybe uh, telecommunication issues. Uh, that they need to have a policies on that as well. So regulation is most important thing. And then you talk about cyber security issues on the legal system. How do you protect? You talk about CIA, you talk about confidentiality of your, your data, you talk about integrity of your data, and you talk about uh, availability of your data. So that's one. Then the number, one, number three about governance. Actually, uh, Industry 4.0 or Industry Forward in Malaysia is supported by the governments. All right. So a lot of initiatives done by governments, like MPC is under MITI, all right, Ministry of International Trade Industries. We do a lot of things. Uh, in fact, uh, we do a lot of uh, activities like uh, uh, business process improvement. We talk about uh, enterprise productivity and the rest of it. And it's not even that. We move up to the levels of upskilling and reskilling the people. So uh, in Malaysia, industry forward is is driven by the government. So uh, there's no issues on on uh, that. Only the challenge is how big is the fund that we'll be having uh, for the next of the years, uh, 2023 mm -hmm. and maybe 2025. Mm -hmm. I see. Thank you very much for sharing yeah, about the case of Malaysia and your insights. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, unfortunately, because of the time, uh, it is almost the end of the session. Yeah. So, Mr. Kumarazaman, uh, could you give a final message to our viewers who are watching today's <laughs> session? All right. Uh, thanks to the viewers who are watching uh, our session here, P-Talk. Uh, Actually, uh, 17th of November today is also my anniversary, my wedding anniversary, yeah, Ray? Uh, 30, ah, 30, 32 <laughs> years of wedding anniversary for me and my wife. Uh, one thing I want, would like to share, I would like to say something on it is that uh, don't afraid of the technology, please. Uh, be brave with the technologies. Uh, uh, do, uh, do a lot of things with the technologies. Play with technologies, don't worry about that. Uh, I, at the age of mine, now also I play with the technologies a lot. And you can see the slide I can sh I share you is now all the data, all the analytics is done by me, uh, but the the electrical parts is done by my team. Okay. One thing that I want to share is about WARM, W A R M. W is meant for work. All right. So when you when you work, make sure your work is productive. That's number one. So number two, when you take action, make sure your action has to be proactive. And number three, you talk about results. Make sure your results are effective. Then finally, your mindset, your mindset has to be positive. So to have this, you need to have, you need to work with industry 4.0 technology. Then it will give you impact on your organizations. So this is the behavioral insight of industry 4.0. What will do uh, more on, on that to give you a better lifestyle, to give you a better a way of doing things. Thank you, Sugu, for the for the which. <laughs> Yeah, happy wedding, Mr. Kamasam. <laughs> wedding, <laughs> wedding anniversary. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Anyway, yeah. Thank you so much for your inspiring and powerful message, Mr. Kamarzaman. So we thank really you. appreciate your time today. Yeah. So today we learned from Mr. Kamarzaman bin Jahidin about Industry 4.0, behavioral insights. So I hope this session inspired all of you. So the APO will continue to broadcast the PTOC series on different topics related to productivity. Please join us next time as well. We'll be looking forward to seeing you again. So for today's session, thank you very much for watching, everyone. And thank you very much, Mr. Kamarzaman. Uh, I enjoyed a lot today's session with you. Okay, so stay safe and stay healthy. So goodbye. Right, bye-bye, everybody. Bye, thank you. Thank you.